We've built a lot of cars here at Donut over the years, but which one is the best according to this man? Well, I need to come clean. I wore this T-shirt today, deliberately, standard. Standard is sort of my thing. You modify cars, Yes. I, I, I return them to standard. You might not like them, that's all I'm trying to say. You might not like them. I keep an open mind. Okay, thank you. And along the way, we're gonna find out what's going on with our fleet back here. I know you guys have been asking about them. We got some new stuff in the back too, at the very end. So, let's get into it. Well, I can, I can tell you straight away, viewers, that this one is broken. <laughs> this is missing. in progress. So first up, we got our high-low Zs. The first project cars on Donut. This one was built using very cheap parts. That one over there was built using very expensive parts. We wanted to see if spending more money was worth it. You decided that yeah. the front bumper wasn't worth it. Right. Now we've got a, a bash bar in the front for drifting. Drifting? You might also realize or recognize this is not a VQ35. No, I did recognize that. Yeah. This is a LQ9 truck motor from a Chevy 1500 or Cadillac Escalade. It's got a lot of torque. It's Has it? Oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of uh, lot of grunt in this thing. This is very, very easy to get sliding, not so easy to keep sliding. I find that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And when you say cheap parts, do you mean secondhand stuff or? So yes, this engine we got from a salvage yard, but you know, the things like the, the engine mounts and the suspension, that body kit on that car cost, I wanna say like $3,000, whereas the one that was on the front here was somewhere around 500, I wanna say it was yeah. less than a thousand. Everything on here is cheap, but works. Do you like 350Zs? I do. Okay. When they're standard. Yeah, this yes. one's not. I'm not a mad fan of drifting, if I'm honest. Yeah. It smells terrible. Tire smoke is a acquired taste. Yeah. It's not one that I've acquired even after many years. What? Well, look, um, <laughs> there's not a lot of room. We did try to maybe, but so we just, just cut a little hole in the hood. I do want to revisit that. I'm going to ask you a very important question. Okay. Does that wing do anything apart from look great? <laughs> no. But it looks cool. Right. So this is the same thing, but done with posh bits. Yes, yes, so LS3 crate engine, I think it makes 450 horsepower. This car has been very temperamental over the years. We finally have it in a place where it will start up every time. Nope, drive shaft broke. That's right, we did break that. Yeah, Adam broke that. It's weird that you say these things because the standard Nissan is a really, really a reliable car. car. Yeah, it's an amazing car. You built this one after that one. At the same time. At the exact same time. Yeah. But you clearly learned from that one because in this one, the engine is inside the car. Yeah. Which is He's got that right, which is a massive advance. And I love your slogan, cars are pain. Yeah. Because that's absolutely true, isn't it? This car, I think, embodies that the best. When you buy a bunch of expensive parts and with high car, when you start putting other expensive things in combination with already expensive, they don't like each other. So you made it difficult for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, that's yeah. fair enough. Is that, a, wait a minute. Who put a Dragon Ball shifter in here? <laughs> How long has that been there? Okay. I don't know. If you had to pick, which one would you take? I think I'm going to go cheap components. Really? So really? It's got a sort of honest, homespun, slightly knocked up. Yeah. Yes. You know, I haven't got that much money to spare sort of vibe, which exactly I, I sort of is. quite admire. Yeah. Like that. That's Thank kind you. of the, the glory of low team. Thank you. What is that? I'm, I'm, this? Yeah. You want to know about my car, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a Chrysler Imperial. It doesn't quite run right now. Right. Do you know what I think would be quite cool with this? I'm speaking as a, an outsider, so um, you can tell me to sod off. but. I think get that engine working mm -hmm. really well. Anything else you need to do to make it run fabulously yes. and reliably, but keep it looking like that. Absolutely. That's the goal. Because that would be just yes, I, tremendous. Thank you. If you watch Donut, then you know we love today's sponsor, Borla. Let's go. <laughs> With their patented technologies, Borla exhaust systems deliver the perfect sound and cutting edge performance. Every system is crafted from high-grade stainless steel. Designed in California, manufactured in Tennessee, Borla stands behind their American-made quality with a million-mile warranty. With a wide range of tips, finishes, and customization options, Borla makes an exhaust system for every kind of vehicle, from sports cars and trucks, from JDM to pure American muscle. Donut believes cars are for everyone, and Borla believes badass exhausts are for everyone. Trust me, they mean everyone. So, if you want to hear and feel the difference of Borla exhaust mix on your car, click the link below. You're gonna want one of these. Oh. This is one of our MX-5s, our Miata here. This is the Money Pit Miata, a track-focused build. 
We've got a roll bar. It's got super sticky tires, great suspension, pretty much anything that you could do to this car. Our buddy Zach Job did to this car. We ran out of things to do with it pretty much. We yep. got to the point where we're making it spit flames out of the exhaust. But this thing's making about 250 horsepower at the wheels. It's a very quick car. So I had one of these actually years ago. It was actually a Mark II. So after they got rid of the pop-ups and it was in many ways the perfect small roadster. I mean, it was powerful enough without being intimidating. It was beautifully balanced, fabulous gear change, excellent throttle response, all those things you want in a, in a fun little car. Yeah. And you've, you've spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does all those things slightly, I mean, better is subjective, but uh, it does make it quite faster. Reliable. And it's been real. I mean, I'm actually surprised how I think out of all the cars here, it hasn't had too many issues. I mean, this is one that you could just fire right up and drive out of here. This is the one that most people borrow on the weekends. So what is the current situation with the Money Pit Miata? It is over boosting a little bit, giving it a little bit more spice on the top end. It's not terrible. And so we've chosen not to fix it. For sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> Would you ever think about painting what we would call the wings. That is kind of the last thing that needs to be done to the money pit. How about James Gin livery Ooh. since, you know, that's why I'm here really. But James, you're in town to promote your gin. James Gin, available from jamesgin.com. It's a, it started as a hobby and it's in danger of turning into a viable business and to be honest, a responsibility. Let's move on to our high and low Tacomas. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Same methodology as the Z's with these two trucks here. This one was built with cheap parts. This one, very expensive. Low Tacoma here, very mild build, I would say. Suspension lift, has a locking rear differential for better off-roading. A few KC lights on there and a handmade bumper. This truck right here has really become the workhorse of Donut. We use it all the time uh, for shoots. We'll load it up with a bunch of gear in the back. You've embraced the accepted yes. abbreviation here, because right. I used to have a Toyota and it was always the Yota. Yota. That's right. Or you can, you can actually take it all the way down to just Yo. I would love to. We're not gonna pop the hood because it's bone stock. Well, you mean almost as if Toyota know what they're doing? Right, right. Yeah. Weird. This almost looks presentable. This looks complete. It's got shiny paintwork. It's been recently waxed and detailed and everything like that. Ugh. What's that? Uh, this was a Ken doll. He's been sunburned a little yeah, bit. Yeah, got a little got bit of sunburn. Up. Kind of an Easter egg. So yeah, I mean, this thing, again, has a lot of uh, very sophisticated off-roading equipment on it. It has the locking differential, like we mentioned on low truck, but this one, this is on an air system. It's an air pneumatic system. And it's front and rear lockers. Yeah, so no. it's pretty much unstoppable in a lot of places. As long as it has the wheel articulation to go through it, it'll do it. This is one of the best, I think, off-roaders I've ever driven. Yeah. Have you had the email from Toyota saying, hey, we'd love to do this to our production cars. Can you send us the detail? <laughs> I'm just going to stand back and have a look at it because I'm not really a pickup kind of bloke. What I like about that, if I may say so, is you haven't overdone the wheels. The wheels are actually quite modest yeah. for a truck with that much lift. That's nice because you haven't, you know, gone mad. Yeah, I'm going to say that that's acceptable. I, I think that's quite tidy. You need to sort out the badging on this side because <laughs> yeah. you haven't done it. Yeah, it needs to be Yoda. Wow, what's that? <laughs> Basically a golf cart. Yeah, we bought this on Alibaba for $2,000 and then we shipped it to the US. Which cost another three or $4,000. Uh, yeah, I think <laughs> total it was around $8,000 for something we can't drive on the road. But then obviously we modified it and it does not work. It comes under cute machinery. Yes. Doesn't it? It's a bit it like is. a Japanese K car. I, I, I like it. Not a single full weld. It's all oh, tack yeah. weld. So yeah, this is all the, this came like this. This was not our doing. Oh, that's uh, how it comes? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you'd done that. No. no. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't drive anymore because our buddy Henry was working on it and cut through the wiring harness. Oh, that's risky. Sozo. Yeah. Is he still with us? Let's move on to a car that I actually really, really, really like. It's our E36 3 Series drift car. This started out as a rally car. Everybody loves the E36. Yeah. What is it about the E36? I mean, I like them as a standard car. Uh, I would say it's a very uh, balanced and forgiving platform. Uh, when we had the original engine in there, it didn't have the most power in the world, but it was a car that you could get sliding pretty easily, but it let you kind of get away with making some mistakes when you're drifting. It's just a very well-balanced platform. Yeah, they look Adam, nice as well. It used to fit a straight six, and with that, we actually also put our own version of a straight six, <laughs> yes. which is a 2J uh, out of a Supra motor engine. <laughs> 
Well, right, let's have a look. Ooh, yeah. you've made use of all the available space. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you can't really put anything more in here. This thing screams, it sounds amazing now. The power is there too. Adam, how much were you making? So we made 600 horsepower to the wheel. Wow. And you'll notice we also put wide body fenders on here. It looks like you fitted them with scissors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the tire, yeah. That looks very That's nice, though. You did a very nice job on that. Thank you. Thank That's you. lovely. This is missing. So you'd lose points in a Concor for that and this. <laughs> it's a really great car. It's one of my favorites here. All right, up next we have the high-low WRXs. The orange is high car, the blue is low car. We took cheap parts, put it on this one, took expensive parts, put it on that one, and we got two time attack track cars that you can also drive on the street. So the yes. These are street legal. I like the color of this. I like the color of that as well, actually. But that's the that's the cheap one. Yes, this is the cheap one. For the first time, the cheap one looks better. High WRX is running 400 and. 50 horsepower or something along those lines. It's got all the expensive parts. It's got a Garrett turbo. It's got a good radiator. We blew up a couple motors. This is six, this is seven, right? Right. Uh, and we blew up the five speeds in both of them. But this one's really good and not broken. I like the color scheme. I mean, it'd be nice if it was all the same orange. When we wrap cars, the sun just destroys yeah. them. And particularly the orange too. I don't know what's been going on, but it's been really, it looked great a month ago and now. It's well, you know, it's a weird thing, but yeah. orange paint, it would seem fades quicker than others because Honda had that problem with all their Repsol bikes. The orange paint goes pale. I do like these. I mean, I, I like a Scooby-Doo. I think they're great. But it's weird, back home, these have a reputation, the engines especially, for being essentially unburstable. And yet you've got through seven, I'm just gonna say it because they don't want to, you've got through seven, yeah. seven it's engines a, It's a lot different car. here. Everyone's going for a lot of power. It's a long story. I mean, I can run it down really quick for you. I think I get the gist of it. <laughs> so this car currently is not running because we have an aftermarket intercooler system on it and it was, a little cheaper and I think the flange was warped on the blow off valve and it blew off at the track so we need to get that replaced. So great. apart from it not working it's great? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright this is our merch van right here. It's uh, not too spectacular except for the uh, the suspension. We lowered it and put some uh, racing wheels on it. Did like the kind of Japanese Dajiban style on this. That looks pretty um pretty regular, pretty standard. Yeah, yeah it's not, it's, it, it's cool. It's got the standard V8 in it. Uh, we did a little bit of fun things to the exhaust. So have you done that? We put a valve on the exhaust uh, right. right after the cat so that it just dumps it out the side. So when we want to be loud, we can be loud. And when we don't need to be loud, it's quiet as a mouse. It's only what Ferrari does. Yeah. 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 That's good. Good color as well. I'm doing a quick tot up of all the cars we've looked at. So it's, uh, so far, one of them's working. Two of them. The Tacoma's working. The Tacoma's. Oh, the... oh, and the van. Yeah. On to the next one that works. Well, it's a Honda, of course it works. <laughs> Even with the attention of you guys, it still works. Yeah. That's a measure of... Well, we love this car. We're trying to take really good care of it. So this Civic right here, we uh, approached with the mindset of just buying some of the most ridiculously overpriced parts available for a Civic and putting them all in one car. This car cost us originally $500. I love this car. It's, you, uh... Do you find with these things that you start off with a, you know, noble intentions and a good idea? Idea. Yeah. I mean, the idea of taking a, a, an, an essentially very excellent car, this Honda, mm -hmm. as you say, perfectly balanced, very, very well engineered and thought out. And then you think, I'll tweak it a bit. So you usually start with something on the suspension or mm -hmm. the wheels. Yes. <laughs> and then you get a bit sort of consumed by it and then yeah. you go a like bit I too far, there's maybe. A point. The point of no return with this car, I think, was the, the ITBs right here. <laughs> with that stock manifold that was on the K20. It started up great. You never had to worry about warming it up or anything like that. Yep. And it was just a turnkey, take anywhere, do anything kind of car. Now, it's just not the same. Do you think you need someone in your organization whose job is simply to come in and say, enough? I will say, we did stop ourselves from turbocharging this car, which I think would have made it even worse. Have you but thought of producing like a really definitive book <laughs> for enthusiasts? It's called, it's yes, called something like, How to Make Your Car Worse by Donut. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've thought, that's a really good idea, actually. <laughs> yes! I mean, I'd read that. Yeah. I mean, that'd be fantastic. You could, have, you could start with pictures of these as you bought them or as they're supposed yeah. to look, yeah. you know, when they no. came out of the factory. It's a good idea, James. How we f***ed it up by Donut. <laughs> it's good, though. I mean, it's, it's, it's very admirable. 
it's very, I mean, this is unique. I think you would enjoy driving this one. It's, it's a fun. very, very good car. Very uh, easy to drive. Have you ever thought for a moment, I mean, I realize you're doing this for your channel and so on, which is great. But if you take all these cars in here and all the money you've spent on them, buying them, modding them, the, the cost of all the parts, <laughs> yeah. what could you have instead of I mean, have you got Whew. have you got an Aventador in here or more? Yeah, I yeah, think so. I think so. Yeah. I, I'm sure you must yeah. be. I, I've never Easily, thought of it yeah. actually like that. Yeah, I mean, you probably could have an Aventador. We sold all our cars for an Aventador. Well, instead of buying an Aventador, James, we bought oh wow this guy <laughs> right here. I can see you were on the horns of a dilemma, Aventador. <laughs> Or this, that's right. Well, I have difficulty with this because these were sold in Britain and it's a very, very unpopular and very widely mocked car. Yeah, really? same here. Yeah. I mean, mainly because it was seen, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but it was seen as a car for British people who wished they were American and lived in LA in the 1950s, oh, basically. Funny. And that's that's a bit sad. Yeah. So I have great difficulty looking at it and not thinking, Bleh. Yeah. Oh, hi, Jimmy. I'm also a Jimmy, James. Nice to meet you. And you. So, Jimmy. I built this beast. Jimmy <laughs> spearheaded this car. A very widely mocked car, for sure, in American culture, but sold incredibly well at the time yeah. over here. But we wanted to kind of explore the remains of the PT Cruiser community at yeah. large, join some clubs, mm -hmm. infiltrate their See clubs. See why they bought so many of them. Jimmy kind of decided that we would build it in a more kind of Japanese mm -hmm. JDM tuner inspired mm -hmm. direction. Yeah. So it's, hang on, just before we move on, it's not turbocharged, you haven't put a different engine in, there's no, 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 no. no. side pipes or? No, just a, just a bolt on exhaust. This is dog slow. Yes. Or has it got, or has it got nitrous in the back? Oh. oh, I've seen the sticker. No, I've seen the sticker. Sorry, cheating. Oh, there you go. That's so, luggage. Wanted to see how much nitrous a stock PT Cruiser engine could take before blowing up, and Jimmy? Oh! A uh, hundred shot. One run on a hundred well, shot. hundred horsepower boost. That's pretty clean. A hundred horsepower boost. I know, it's pretty good. Yeah, the plastic intake manifold exploded, and that's that. Wait a minute, I've seen one of these before. Our $500 Ford Ranger that we have extensively modified. Same philosophy as the Civic, all the most expensive parts into one car. This is a, a desert racer. We're gonna be taking this out to Ensenada, Mexico in a few months here. The only stock pieces left really on this whole truck is the grill assembly up front and the cab. Everything else has been modified on this truck. So this is a buggy really, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. yeah there's no concession to comfort or or uh, trim. Well, this is a full race vehicle at the point, you know. Hey. So it's pretty standard. Who are your neighbors? You've got more. You've got yes. more inside. Yes. More cars more. inside. Oh, Ooh, look. Welcome. Clean, shiny things. This is another MX-5. Whoa, those wheels. Whoa. <laughs> Strong. Jimmy, I bet you'd flip a switch. All right. Whoa. <laughs> you do that at the traffic lights and that gets the chicks. Yes. Is that yeah. basically what? Well, ha has it? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy and Phil here and uh, a few other people put a ton of work into this thing over the past couple months. It's unique. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it is. Ever, did y'all ever have any experience with lowriders? No, we never really did. I mean, I did I did have a go in one once. It okay. was something enormous, I can't, uh, American. Usually they are classic American. Yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was a Yank Iron type yeah. thing. And it didn't bounce as quickly as that. It was relatively slow. That's very responsive. Do you mind if I <laughs> sit in it and see what it's like it to- switches, yeah. Which one is which? So you've got front, yep. back, side, on the left, side, to the right. Okay, so I've pulled up at the lights. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and there's, Someone interesting yeah. alongside, so I just, hi. There you go. That's front and that's back. Oh, I see what you mean. It's, it's a little touch, isn't it? You got a real. And then side to side, does it? Just a little bit. Whoa! <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I can go front down. Right on the front. Right on there. Oh, sorry, I've overdone it. There you go. You look good in that thing, James. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's me. I could get used to that. What does it actually drive like, though? I mean, actually, it drives pretty well. You feel the road a lot. <laughs> Hang on, it's not quite level, which is bothering me. Hang on. I like anything with gold wheels. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. 
Yeah. Three marine batteries. Oh, geez, that would drive the car. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Where'd you put your luggage? Maybe like a, uh, a, trunk a trunk rack. Yeah, like on an old MG or yeah. something. Yeah. We get it gold plated. Oh, there we go. That sounds sick, actually. Road trip. We've got two last cars for you, James. Okay. They're not very spectacular right now, but they will be in a couple weeks. We got our high low drag Mustangs right here. This is high car. This is all the expensive parts that we going into this one. Justin, he's on high team this time around. Yeah, so, so far the tires aren't on there, but this is running slicks all the way around for drag racing. Just like the WRXs, the Zs, the Tacomas, this is our next round of high low here. We're gonna be building some drag cars. Yeah, but we just got started. As you can see, the only mod on here right now is the wheel and tire on the back. That's a, a street radial drag tire. So it's a street legal drag slick basically. And you're gonna have a race when you both done? Yes. Straight off race between these two cars? Yes. Yep. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I'm really, really excited. So there's the front slick. Front Those slick. are nice. Yeah. yeah, these are called skinnies. That's like the optional ones you get on the on the uh, Dodge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really a competition. It's it, whoever's car blows up first is the loser. How long is it going to take? A couple, what, like three months? Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, three okay. months. Could be a Christmas special. Could be. Feels like Christmas at least. So yeah, that does it uh, for all of our cars. Love Which that. one's your favorite? Uh, ooh. I think the Miata. I think it is, you know. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's sort of, I mean, it's ridiculous, but it's, it's funny. It's you funny. know, I quite like cars with, with a sense of humor. And I think, well, the Miata's got one anyway, and it's right, definitely got right. one with that. And anything with gold wheels is just acceptable, yeah. I think. <laughs> All right, there you have it. James May's favorite donut car is the Lowrider Miata, which honestly, great choice. I, I love that thing as well. Thank you. And uh, James, one more time with your gin. Jamesgin.com. Thank you very much, James. That's been really Thank great. You. It was a pleasure to meet you. Really good. All right, if you want to see us dyno these cars, click right here and we'll see you next time. Excellent.